Let's take our Bibles for our scripture reading and turn to Job chapter 14. We'll see how this particular portion of scripture relates to what we're going to consider in the message of the hour concerning the death of Solomon. Here in Job chapter 14, Job is here speaking and declares, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble, such as our lot as depraved fallen creatures appointed unto death. And even if one should live to be a hundred years old, what is that in comparison to eternity? He cometh forth like a flower, Think about a little baby being born. Everybody boo boo gone over the baby and just fresh skin, thinking, oh, what a beautiful creature. And then comes and is cut down. The Lord gave me the thought that as soon as a baby is born, it's dying. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. I think any of us that have lived for some time, it seems like a long time, perhaps, but then when you look back, you realize it has gone by like a shadow described here, and then it is no more, continueth not. Doth thou open thine eyes upon such an one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? Here he's speaking to his supposed comforters, that somehow what is befalling him is unique to him. Job is confessing here that what has taken place, even being at the door of death, is, is his lot. And who would ever look upon him and not upon themselves and assume that he's being judged in a different way? And he asks this question. Another way that the New Testament puts it is, there's none righteous, no, not one. Here, the question is asked, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. And we know when the Lord Jesus Christ was born in this world, he was created in that womb. He was not of any earthly seed like Adam. And so there are those that say, well, then Mary had to be pure in order to bring from her one that was not unclean. That's man's logic. That's assuming even Mary had something to do with that seed that was in her. Her womb was simply borrowed. It was, it was a clean womb. You stop and think about it. When he was born, he was born in a womb that had never been penetrated, known by man. When he died, he was put in a tomb that had never had a body laid in. That's an amazing thing that how God looked upon his son as being that sinless one. It says, seeing his days are determined. Science tries to figure out why someone lives to 100, another 60, another in younger years, and they try to come up with a formula. But here the scriptures give the clear answer. Seeing his days are determined. The number of his months are with thee. Not just down to years, but months. Thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. People talk about adding years to your life. You can. You might enjoy some better quality of life depending on how you live, but you're not going to add years to take from him. According to the Lord's determination. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish as an hireling his day. That's an interesting way to put it, that we're all on borrowed time as a hireling. And the Lord is going to bring to pass, if you did nothing, you just let a person lie, live their life, they're still going to live out. He shall accomplish as an hireling his day, what God has purposed. There's hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud. 
and bring forth boughs like a plant. But man dieth and wasteth away. It's comparing man even to a tree. There are trees that are still alive today, even though perhaps have been cut down, but now have regrown, that have outlived man. Here's man, man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Now, one thing in reading verses 7 through 9 about the tree, we know that there's a beautiful picture in there of the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though these different ones of his genealogy came and went, yet there was always that root that sprout, that branch of David that God had purposed should bud forth from that genealogy, even though they had long ago wasted away. But it didn't depend on them. It was the Lord. As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. It's an interesting scripture that it speaks of the final resurrection when all that pertains to this world will be burn up all the elements of the world. And there's our hope of resurrection even as spoken by Job. So man lie down and rise not till. It doesn't mean forever, but till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave. Here's Job considering his own estate and weariness in this flesh, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. Well, guess what? That set time was when the Lord Jesus Christ came and paid his debt. And the Lord led captivity captive. Just wasn't to be in his day. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my notice, appointed time, will I wait till my change come? And that's why later on, a few chapters, he said, I know that my Redeemer lived. That was his hope. It wasn't in his flesh. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to the work of thine hands. What did Isaiah say? He shall see his seed and shall prosper. Everyone that the Lord Jesus Christ died to pay their debt and God justified. Here was his hope. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to work to the work of thine hands. None lost that he's purposed to save. For now thou numbers my steps. And that's the key there. Now thou numbers my steps. Dost thou not watch over my sin? You see, before Christ came and paid the debt, these, like Job, were under the forbearance of God. He, he saw their sin and hadn't been put away. But it was a watching over and an accounting of it. It's not that God just looked the other way. Because in verse 17, he says, My transgression is sealed up in a bag, and thou sowest up mine iniquity. This is actually a custom that was used in accounting. Once you finish counting the money, it wasn't supposed to be counted again. You put it in a bag and sealed it. That's what that word means, sealed up in a bag. You say, well, for what purpose is God doing this? Because every sin would be accounted for when the Lord Jesus Christ paid the debt. There wasn't going to be one loss, one overlooked. It's all in the bag. Preserve for that day. And it says, Surely the mountains falling cometh to naught, and the rock is removed out of his place. The waters wear the stones. Thou washest away the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and, I, and thou destroyest the hope of man. He's describing there a lot of men as men in this world. You see the mountains falling and coming to naught. If that's so of mountains and rocks, I'm the soul of man. But thou prevailest forever against him, and he passeth. Thou changest his countenance and sendest him away. 
It's describing who we are in this flesh. Nothing but fading grass, dust of the earth. His sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but he perceiveth it not of them. We don't know what will be after we're gone, even with regard to our offspring, our children. They may be rebels now, and we die, never seen a work of grace in them, and after we're gone, the Lord may be pleased to call them. We don't know, but the Lord does. But his flesh, in verse 22, upon him shall have pain. That's our lot. We deserve nothing better than that, being sinners as we are, and his soul within him shall mourn. I believe for those of us that are the Lord's, he purposes these things, lest we should ever put confidence in this flesh. We're going to die just as others have died before us. And yet, no greater blessing than to die in that hope that all of our transgressions that were sealed up in a bag, so to speak, have been put away. They've been accounted for. And there is therefore now no condemnation. Job looked forward to that day. We look back to that day, and that was accomplished. And that we can lay down our heads peace and rest, whatever the day is that the Lord is pleased to take us. Gracious Father, I thank you for your word, the encouragement of it, to know that what we read here and even our own thoughts are expressed to <clears throat> ponder these lives that you've given us and to realize that everything is going according to what you've ordained. And may our eyes ever be on your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, knowing that there's no hope in this flesh. It can never improve or be improved. It can only die to death. But if Christ has paid that debt, therein is our hope that he came, lived, died, and rose again. And sent it on high. And uh, will indeed call each one of his own that he has redeemed and you have justified, call them to himself. What a glorious hope in him. So I pray that you would be with us as we read your word, that we might do so with eyes opened by your spirit, hearts that receive your word by your grace alone, and we would see Jesus. We give you the praise, honor, and glory in his precious name.